Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be covering polymorphism. This is covered in Unit 9, Inheritance. It's a part of us. It's part of a lesson with inheritance, <coughs> and luckily, you kind of already know how polymorphism works because I've already taught the two concepts of polymorphism. Polymorphism just consists of two parts: runtime polymorphism and compile time polymorphism. It polymorphism is just divided into two types. So you've already learned those two types, luckily, because I've already put them on the channel, and those two types are just method overloading because that's a synonym for compile time i mean overloading runtime and then runtime you've already learned what that is because that's just method overriding so you already know how polymorphism works you just haven't heard of the full term polymorphism just consists of method overloading and method overriding there are two ways you can do and you can achieve polymorphism so first of all I just want to say poly polymorphism is part of inheritance. Um, it involves inheritance. Polymorphism is just when multiple classes are related among each other through inheritance, which is why College Board puts it in Unit 9. So let's go ahead and recap. So we have inheritance. Let's go to our four core OOP concepts. So inheritance, we already covered in unit, that's already unit nine, check that. Polymorphism, unit nine, check that. Abstraction, no longer present. This is gonna be next. And encapsulation is unit five writing classes, which is gonna be soon. So in this video, we're going to focus on polymorphism, which is when multiple classes are related to each other through inheritance. So, polymorphism. I like to break it down into two parts. I've already broken it down into one of the two parts. Another for another type of, another definition for polymorphism, or another way to describe it, is in its word itself. So the prefix poly, you probably know what that means, right? In reading class, the prefix poly just means many. So the prefix poly just means many. The prefix morph just means forms. So what does polymorphism mean? Polymorphism just means the ability of an object to be, to be in many forms. So an object can undergo many forms. There we go. So, oh, two definitions. Multiple classes related to each other through inheritance, and an object undergoes into many forms. So the easiest way to know polymorphism is to just know what the word means. Break it down into its parts. Poly just means many, and morph just means forms. So many forms. And since polymorphism is a part of OOP, just know it's objects, many forms. An object can be converted into many forms. Polymorphism, done. Okay, so, Let's kind of give an example on how you would utilize polymorphism in Java. So in Java, how would you utilize polymorphism? We have classes. Let's say we have class A. 
You got a class B. And then you got a class C. By the way, these classes will all extend our parent class A. Okay, we're done. So, what can we do? Well, this part right here, I've already taught it, so I'm not gonna reteach it. Make methods. It saves me time. Since y'all already know how method overriding and overloading works, try this in your compiler. Make three classes. Make a parent class and make two child classes. And make a method that you can either overload or override. Since I've already taught these two, just put one of those concepts into these classes. I'm gonna put arrows in between them. The thing that I'm gonna teach is what you put inside the main method. So usually when I, when I taught these two things, I usually skipped what you put in the main method in order for the code to successfully compile. Because remember the main method is what actually is your driver code. It's what prints on the terminal. So in order to actually print it on the main method, what you're gonna do is you're gonna have to have, you're gonna have a class. It's gonna match your file name. So let's say I have file name. And then finally what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make an object out of all of these forms. So what I can do is I can make an object called A. I can make another object, make it out of the class B, and then I, make, I can make a C object and make it out of this child class C. And right here, is, this is kind of how you would put polymorphism. Because you can see it's an object that is undergoing many different forms. So that's why we kind of created three different objects, an object for each of the forms, which is why we're demonstrating polymorphism, because it's just an object that's undergoing into many forms. It's object A that's part of the new class A, and then A that's part of the new class B, and it's A part of the new class C. So it's originating from the same superclass, but it's undergoing many different forms through varying its child class, B and C. And, th and this is just gonna print your method here. This is just gonna print your method here. This is just gonna print your method here. Remember that you have to make an object call to it since the methods that you make aren't static, unless you decide to make them static, but this is oop. So like we're talking about oop and oop is just the concept of creating objects. So if I were you, I wouldn't make your method static whenever we're going over oop. Make, make them non-static or make them instance methods. By the way, they mean the same thing. So this is how you would kind of create your objects. And then if you wanted to print them out, you would just do c dot whatever the name of your method is. So method name. And then in your parentheses, whatever parameters that you're passing into, and then you close it. So that's kind of how a little bit of a demonstration of how polymorphism works. So I'm going to break it down. Polymorphism is a section in unit nine inheritance on the AP curriculum. Polymorphism is just when multiple classes are related to each other through inheritance. And the reason why, that's probably the reason why it's within inheritance, the unit, because it's just multiple classes related to each other through inheritance. You see that we undergo inheritance and we have multiple classes using and applying inheritance. Um, and then it's just when an object undergoes many forms, break it down into its word, um, its prefix and its suffix, morph and poly, many and form. So that kind of helps. And since it's oop, polymorphism is an oop concept. It just means an object undergoes many forms. And then over here, um, what we have is we've made it three different classes. We've made two child classes and a parent class. The child classes obviously extend the parent class. We made methods that either overload or override the method. Remember that polymorphism is just either method overriding or method overloading. There are two ways you can achieve it. And since I've already taught those, I didn't want to waste too much time reteaching them and putting them here. So you can put your own method through the use of method overriding and method overloading. We're going to do a little bit of demonstration putting methods into here in our in our um, coding demo and then over here is when we've instantiated objects into the different forms of each of the child classes and then we've called each object through its method name and then in here is just any parameters you want to put in 
if you've seen my videos, I always put this empty. That's just because my method doesn't take in any parameters usually. It's always void and it doesn't take any parameters. Later, I might make methods actually return something in the passing parameters. Um, maybe in like, I don't know, an abstraction video, I believe I make a non-void method that actually returns stuff. But yeah, that's just it. I'll see you guys next time. Print the four notable characters of the SpongeBob series using either type of polymorphism, compile time or run time. So once again, just some more notes. Compile time just means method overloading. And runtime just means method overriding. Luckily, I've already talked about both of those things, so it shouldn't be a worry. You should be able to solve this problem anyways. So we can either use compile time polymorphism or runtime polymorphism to successfully do this task. I'm gonna do runtime polymorphism. I just feel like it's better. By the way, these are synonyms. These are synonyms. So you can use them interchangeably. All right, so let's get started. We have to print out the four notable characters of the SpongeBob series. So what we can do is we can just simply make a method called print character. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna print the name of the character. All right. And then I'm gonna go to my next class and I'm gonna override this method going to define my signature again. It's going to be the same method, and we're just going to print out the next character, which is Patrick. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to repeat the process. And then finally, we can do it one more time, override this method. Okay, there we go, we're done. And then after that, we can go into our main method and we can make objects for each of these things. So I can make an S, S, whoops, my Okay, and then finally what I can do is I can call the print character method for each of them. And then I can do sq.printCharacter. And there we go, I'm done. I've successfully printed out all four of them. Yes, I have. I've successfully printed out all four characters in the SpongeBob series. So that's how you do it through run runtime polymorphism. So you can also do it through um, compile time polymorphism, which I won't be doing, but I will be kind of teaching it in a little bit of a different way. You can also approach this problem in another way. I've not talked about this way, but what it really does is that it adds a typecast to the object. So you know how we can typecast primitive types? We can also add a cast to an object. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the annotations and I'm gonna make this print second character. And then I'm gonna do a print third character. And then we do print a fourth character. And then what I can do is I can just make this. Right? And then what we're going to have to do is we're just going to have to do p.print second character. And then you can do essay.print third character. And that successfully runs. However, you can do it a little bit of a different way as well. So you can do that. And what this does is you can then 
add a little bit of a typecast to it. So what this does is that it's going to reference to the class Patrick and it's going to do it. So that's kind of a, way, a good way to typecast it. So then I can make this Sandy. That's pretty much it. Although I am a little bit. Oh, there it is. I was missing that parentheses. Okay, and that's kind of how you can typecast objects, and it's still gonna do the same thing. So those are just two. Th those are just that was just an alternative uh, alternative approach. The main thing you just have to know is yeah, since it didn't really follow the question, but the main objective here is you either use method overloading or method overriding. And if you know how to do those two, you're good to go. You don't have to worry about typecasting objects and stuff like that. I just thought it was a good thing to point out some other alternative solution you can do for this problem is to typecast the object.